Hello everyone and welcome back to another challenge run. In this run we'll be seeing if I can beat Skyrim as a guard. So what are the exact rules of this challenge? I have to complete the game while wearing attire that would be found on any of the guards throughout Skyrim. I decided to do a combination of any guard's gear as it makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, I also have to pick a city in whichever city I pick. I have to do most of the quests or any quest that makes sense, as well as any guilds or anything that would also make sense inside the city. I did just want to do the Civil War this time around though, so I decided to pick Solitude as the city. Um, also just because I kind of like the half Imperial heavy armor with the Solitude armor. I actually really like the Solitude armor, armor. it's kind of clean. I also have to do stuff like become Thane and obtain property, so this being the most expensive house mean, gives me the most reason to go around and do random stuff as well. Uh, and also the Bard's College is located in here, so that gives us another thing we can do. But with that, let's begin. Originally I made the character a wood elf because, I don't know, I just like elves, and then I eventually decided that every guard is literally a Nord. They all use a human model, but they are literally all Nords, so I just went back and made a Nord. Uh, I also make sure we have an appropriate name to blend in. I also apologize if I sound a little bit off in this video. Uh, everybody in my house has been getting sick recently. I mentioned that a little bit in the Guild Wars Let's Play, but if you just watch this, yeah, that's why I sound a little bit off. There's no guard gear in the intro, so I just end up wearing some Imperial gear so far, and I realized right now they could have literally just taken the Stormcloak gear, and that sentence is not correct, and I should have just taken the Stormcloak gear and worn it, because it's literally what their guards exactly wear. We then head for the Warrior Stone, as, well, it'll just give us the best bonuses for this run. As we need a lot of gold for this run, I decide to just do Ember Shard Mine while we're in the area. Uh, easy money. And we need about 40k gold, roughly, for the house, so gotta get some where we can. We get a steel greatsword off one of the bandits in the cave, which is going to be our weapon for the rest of the run, or at least our main weapon, as the best weapons that guards carry are steel, and there are some guards that use two-handers, and I want an excuse to use two-handers because I've literally never used them before. Is at this point that I kind of started planning how I would get our guard armor, our solitude guard armor, and originally I didn't want to have to murder a guard or something like that because that felt kind of wrong so the only other option is to have a dragon kill a guard for that reason we need to get the dragon spawning as quick as humanly possible so it's off to bleak falls barrow the bleak falls barrow gets absolutely destroyed by the great sword it slaps part of the reason i want to use two handers is just that i've never really used them before um, the other weapons we can use according to the challenge restrictions are one-handers plus a shield, a dagger, or a bow if we need. At first we just shoot some pock shots at the dragon, but eventually we decide just to let it land and rush it and slap it in the face with our toothpick until it dies. We also are able to loot white run guard armor off the dragon, so at least for now we can actually wear some guard armor since I forgot to take the stormcloak armor from the beginning because I wasn't thinking about it until I finished the run. With dragons finally spawning, we're off to Solitude to just do some random tasks and try to hope that a dragon spawns and then kills a guard. As we're just walking along, we run into a drug dealer, and you know we gotta keep these streets clean for these kids nowadays. Can't have them falling into the moon sugar. I also decide to partake in the Lights Out quest. Uh, we need the money and... The we get to kill a bandit group at the end, and removing bandits from the hold is very on brand for this run, so. I do also acquire uh, Imperial Heavy bracers and boots at this point, which is what the Solitude Guards wear, and I just start wearing those. Uh, this does mean that we're going to have a mix of heavy and light armor, but I do actually like the way it looks, even if it's not super practical. We get double-crossed at the boat, and now we're off to the hideout to remove the bandits from our fair hold. On the way to the bandit's hideout, we run into the legendary magical land fish. After bringing the raid to the bandits, we recollect the loot and head back to solitude. 
I pick up the quest to clear out Wolf Skull Cave from the Jarl's Court. And on the way to do this quest, I finally got our first dragon to spawn. At this point, I'd been trying to get dragons to spawn for about 45 minutes at this point, point, either Solitude or Dragon's Bridge, preferably Dragon's Bridge, because I figured it'd be easier for the dragon to kill the guards. Yeah, two guards and Dragon's Bridge took care of the dragon uh, by themselves, so no luck on the armor there. I think this has probably got something to do with the fact that guards just start at a high level and don't really scale with the player level, whereas the dragons scale with the player, but I'm not exactly sure. After about another 30 minutes of trying and not being able to get a dragon to spawn, I decided I just wanted to get the armor and get on with the run, so um, don't check under the solitude docks. Y'all didn't see anything. Now that we have the armor, I don't know why, but I actually really like it. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the armor in base Skyrim just because I'm used to using modded armor sets, but I do actually really like the solitude armor and the red is really nice and it goes with the whitish gloves, whitish silver gloves and boots. It looks kind of cool. Don't you walk away. On our way to Wolf Skull Cave, we run into a thief and if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. And the time is forever. The final encounter in Wolf Skull Cave with the Necromancer shows off both the power and the weakness of the guard set up pretty effectively. We do pretty solid damage with the two-hander, but being half heavy and half light armor means that it's hard to level up and get perks for the different armors, so it means we are quite squishy despite having a relatively high armor value. On the way to the Blue Palace, we get the quest to show off the Radiant Raiment clothes to the Jarls just to have something to do and at this point I wasn't sh exactly sure if I wanted to marry someone from the city and this is one of the only two options. We turn in our quest from Wolf Skull and get the quest to bring the Jarl's late husband Horn to the Shrine of Talos. The Shrine is on our way to meet the Greybeards so back to White Run and a quick jog over to the Shrine. I clear out some random bandit caves along the way as we will need quite a bit of money for this run. At these bandit towers, they must have clearly known I was coming, as they were so excited they started jumping off the tower to meet me. I did decide to get my revenge from the previous run and clear out that fort that had the mages in it. Not just because I was salty, but also because their loot is quite valuable. I jogged up to the graybeards as normal, yada yada. We get sent to retrieve the horn. I do buy a horse from the Solitude Stable just because it feels relatively right to the character and it'd be nice to get around with. I do tell the Jarl that I delivered the horn and now we can buy the house whenever I get the money. I decided at this point that I wanted to do the Bard's College storyline quick so I headed over and agreed to go find King Olaf's verse. One quick dungeon and one dead Olaf later and it's back to the college. Okay, so half the book was destroyed, so we have to do what every political, religious leader, or parent does when faced with an issue they don't know the answer to. Just make random stuff up and hope no one double checks. Surprisingly, the Jarl and her court like our made-up poem, and the festival is back on. We attend the festival and officially get recognized as a member of the Bard's College. I also pick up our first task to join the Legion here, as I do want to finish the Civil War questline for this character. Three of the college professors have all lost or found some legendary instruments, so we're off to collect all three of those instruments for some level bonuses. First up is Finn's loot in the possession of some bandits over in the rift. Next is Patea's flute, which is in a frozen cave full of necromancers who are basically scammed into buying the thing, thinking it had magical powers. Last is Rahorn's Drum, which is over in Falkreath in an old Nord burial site. We turn all these quests in, and it gives us essentially a plus one bonus to all of our skills, or all of our levels. We get the message for the follow-up quest 
to the Wolf Skull Cave thing, and we have to stop Potema from being resurrected again. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson? We head through the Temple of the Divines to the catacombs below. At the end of the cave, Potemo makes us fight a gauntlet of Draugr as a lightning ball in the center of the room blasts around. It is basically one of the more interesting final bosses of any dungeon in the game, in my opinion. We return the remains to the Priest of Arche because we already have enough bones in our bag. We don't need more people asking questions. And he prevents Potema from returning again. Having finished up all the side questing I want to do for the time being, we focus our efforts back to the Civil War quest line. After clearing out the fort, we head back to Solitude to become an Imperial, gotta hunt those Jedis and blow up Alderaan. Our first real mission is to recover an artifact known as the Jagged Crown. We meet up with our superior and Hadvar again for the first time after seeing him post Helgen. I like how they keep him or Rayloff around and give them a role that kind of parallels your own in the Civil War. Simple as clearing out some Stormcloaks there inside the tomb, and eventually the Draugr within to get to the crown and bring it back to General Tullius. Our next mission is to head to Whiterun and deliver a message, and after some more message giving by the Jarl of Whiterun, we end up at the Battle of Whiterun. Before the fight, the soldier here is so excited he starts vibrating. Way to show some enthusiasm. We simply hold them at the gates. To be completely honest, this quest is a little bit cooler if you let them in the city or if you're on the other side pushing into the city, but it's still okay. The Jarl gives out an empowering speech that is so empowering that all the troops start vibrating again. Dawnstar is next on the Legion's To Conquer list. All we gotta do is intercept a message for a Stormcloak captain station here. We then change the contents of the note and deliver it to the Stormcloak officer in Dawnstar. On a side note, did y'all know that there's a court wizard in Dawnstar? I have played this game for over a thousand hours and I have never seen this NPC before in my life. We're off to another fort fight. There's a couple of these in the war as a whole. The Rift is the next region on our to capture list but first we grab a unique imperial helm which i end up wearing for the rest of the war just because it kind of looks cool and it's kind of cool that's out here we need to blackmail rifton steward for information so we sneak into her room and grab some incriminating documents she keeps right in her dresser for some reason blackmail successful and now we're off to intercept a supply run of gold and weapons Hadvar is back to help us with the operation. We are solid to follow his plan. That sounds pretty good, but basically just evolves into me shoving my great sword into people's faces before they know what happened. Raid the Fort 2, Electric Boogaloo, and the Rift is under Imperial control. Third on our list is Winterhold, and this one is literally a single mission. This hold is so barren that there's not enough space for a quest and a raid the fort. It's just the same event. Meet up with Hadfar again, and this time I sneak into a prison to free some captured friendlies, and we storm out to regroup with Hadfar. To be honest, I never saw Hadfar, and all the prisoners died in the battle, I'm pretty sure, so... And last but not least is the final cell on Windhelm, which is basically just the same as all the fort fights, just in Windhelm and with slightly more speeches. Ulfric wants us to execute him, since he says he'll be turned into a much better song one dead Yarl later, and it's off to address the troops. Tolius addresses the troops, but he needs to take lessons from Jarl Bulgraf. He's not even good enough to make people vibrate. This is my first time doing the Imperial side of the Civil War, and only my second time playing through the Civil War as a whole. Honestly, I kind of prefer to not do it on my playthrough, just because the damage to the cities kind of bothers me, and it makes half the guards swap to less interesting models, and I like the visual diversity, but it's whatever. But anyways, we are back off to Solitude for the last goal before we tackle the main quest, and that's a buying Proud Spire Manor. We've been saving gold the whole run, and it costs most of what we have, but we do get the house. I store some goodies and have a nice sit before we venture off to finish the main quest. 
first stop is the horn, so we head over to Morthal and make our way to the dungeon. The weird bugs continue, and the statues that normally pop up when you enter the final room of the dungeon are already up for some reason. We head back to River Ward to get the horn back and get our test to go kill the dragon with Delphine. This fight is easier than in the summon challenge. I have a feeling this dragon doesn't scale with your level because it's squishier than even the random dragons I've killed at this point in the run. Now it's off to Solitude to crash a party. You would think at this point they would just stop inviting me to these things. We take quite a bit of damage and slurp down pots at this point in the game, although we kind of hit like an absolute truck and the first person kill cans with two-handed weapons is pretty sick, I'm not gonna lie. I never really got tired of him over the course of the run. This time we do a much better job of actually protecting Melbourne. Off to Riften to find Esbern. We give Bran Shea some business before we frame him for theft, so you know, that was nice of us. We get in a standoff with a random guy in the rat way. Mine is in fact bigger. Cut some down water into pieces. I love these kill cans, they're actually pretty cool. I've always seen the one-handed and the dagger ones, but it's kinda cool to see the two-handed ones. I loot these little chests in most runs. As I run by, I just realize that this is the only time I think they rescale the chest model in the entire game. So they had the tools to do it, and then just never really did it. Bring Esbern back to Delphine. It's time for our little field trip to Alduin's Wall. I got my parents to sign the permission slip. We hike up to Puff the Friendly Dragon, and now it's Elder Scroll time. Thanks to some comments in previous videos, I know that you can just run to Septum out in the ice flow now and don't actually have to go to the college, so thank you for that. On the way to Blackreach, we see Alduin resurrect a dragon. This is something that can happen randomly in the open world, and I think I've only ever seen this once before, my first time ever playing Skyrim. It's pretty cool. I kind of like that there's a random event where you can see Alduin just out in the world doing his thing. Grab the scroll from Blackreach, and it's back to see Puff. So, the first fight with Alduin. Our armor is seriously starting to drag us down here, and we have to chug a lot of potions, like 30 in this fight. We head back to Dragon's Reach to ask about trapping the dragon, and thanks to me actually doing this Civil War for once, I don't have to sit through the 20 minute talk. Hooray! The quest is slightly different if you have already done the Civil War. All you have to do is go back to Sky Ruler Temple and talk to Esbern and learn the shout. And then just come right back and trap the dragon, and we head out to the final dungeon. The dungeon itself wasn't too bad. It's really only dragons at this point that are scary, almost like I marked the Atronach Stone for this exact reason and then forgot to go back and pick it up. I decide to see if you can actually get to the Sovereign Guard portal before the Dragon Priest closes it. Um, so you can avoid killing him. And you can. This pacifist run is looking more doable. I just have to find a way to do that last one damage to Alduin without me actually being the person who has to kill him. We grab the heroes. And we summon forth the big black dragon. Introduce the dragon to the power of Steel Toothpick. And it's done. As usual, having three extra meat shields in the last fight makes it not as bad as the fight in the mountains. Alright, and that was the run for this week. I want to thank you all for coming out. This one was a lot of fun. I got to do a lot of random stuff that I normally don't do. Stuff like the Civil War. Like I said, I've only done once before. Um, it was fun to use a two-hander. I've never really used a two-hander, so the uh, animations are pretty cool. Sadly, I didn't get the really fun perk until very late into the run, so I didn't really get to use it, which is the, uh, the level 70 perk that lets it do it. You do AoE damage with sideways power attacks. But, who knows, maybe we'll have another run at some point with uh, a two-hander being used for something. We'll see. But, anyway, that is going to be it for this week's video. I think I already have next week's challenge picked out. Someone suggested in the comments, so look forward to that. 
Um, the run itself might actually be a little bit shorter than some of our other runs, but it's going to actually be a pretty hard challenge. Um, I'm also going to take the extra time to record our first Fallout 4 challenge, because I've never actually played through Fallout 4 completely myself, so I figure it's going to take me a little bit of extra time to actually get through the game, play it, and have some fun. So, look forward to that week after next. But with that, I appreciate you all watching. I would love to hear any comments or challenges you would like to see done. Whether they be character themed, a specific weapon, an actual challenge. It doesn't have to be the main story as well. For example, one of the other challenges I'm thinking of is trying to beat Dragonborn without leaving Dragonborn. Like starting a character there. That could be fun. Um, or anything along those lines. But that's going to do it for me here today. I hope you have a nice weekend. And I hope to see you in the next one.